Hola, Brother Anthony. Well, no, you know, Brother Dudley. Well, actually, you don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you now, so you're gonna know. Anyway, I was coming to campus the other day, you know, and you know, you got that road that goes up and, you know, all two hours to go to campus and comes up and go to Fort Beaufort. But it also, it comes from Middle Drift, which is where the prison's at. You know, the prison during apartheid and all that stuff, but there's still a prison there, and this is for, I guess, modern criminals rather than whatever it was thrown in prison back then. What's the name of that prison back then? Middle Drift? What's the name of that? Mm -hmm. so, 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 something that they, that they know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But that's why I was going. Maximum. What's it called? M Middle Drift Maximum Prison. Oh, Mil Middle Drift Maximum Prison. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they had these, uh, uh, I guess in the States we call them paddy wagons. You know, where you have, it looks like you're carrying animals, you know, in a cage or whatever. Have you. So, and two of them were up, you know, ah, you know, with the blue lights and going, no, anybody that knows Alice, you don't need to be putting on your lights and speeding down through Alice. But anyway, so the prisoners in back there, and, let me say with just blue lights. I think it's like boys in their toys. They got the capacity to put blue lights on and go fast because there's some sort of whatever. You know, go, I guess they go to the magistrate here in Alice. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so anyway, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> anyway, so the guys, you know, one one guy, one uh, van went by, or paddy wagon went by, another went by, and all the guys, the prisoners in there, they're, they're banging on the thing and singing. <laughs> <laughs> it's an African thing. I know it's a South African thing. Yeah. They, they, they sing with the drop of the hat, sing and dance. Mm -hmm. Wait a so I was thinking, you know, and, and a lot of times you realize the kind of, the kind of, they say maximum security, but a lot of these guys is in prison like that. They're not really criminals. Like I don't even call criminals criminals these days, because the real criminals don't be put in jail. I'm talking about you know the big the, the oligarchs and stuff like that, the people who have the capacity to rip you off. Anyway, but I'm just thinking that these these let me put it this way: these these are brothers and sisters. These are brothers and sisters who need uh, who need a job, mm -hmm. and you ain't got no job for them, so they're making their own way into a job. But then you're gonna Ill, you're gonna uh, uh, make their, their their job illegal, but you won't make a legal job for them. You know, I guess. Thing. And what's interesting, more interesting to me, let me go back to the 50s in the United States. There was a thing, uh, spate, uh, hubcaps, stealing hubcaps. I'm just, I'm just going to throw it in there. Let's say, for instance, a hubcap, you would steal a hubcap and it was worth, say, $35. You know, let's just say that. Well, at some particular point, hubcaps prices went up, or they put whatever they put into it. So now the hubcap, say, is, is worth, I don't know, say, $200 or $300. Now instead of becoming just a petty crime, it becomes grand theft <laughs> because the price of the hubcap goes. Mm -hmm. Well, the crime is the same, stealing hubcaps, but the value or the value they put on it becomes so then, then now you become a big time criminal for something that you, that your uncle did or, you know, people did and you just following the tradition or you need money or whatever, whatever it is. I'm not saying they're right or wrong. I'm just trying to say this thing of criminalizing something to me is arbitrary. You know, uh, because with, with, with what they call the big boys, you know, if something happens and they want to change, uh, they want to change the laws. They say, "Oh, this is criminal." Well, fine. They live for a while and let it go, and then they change the law, so it's no longer criminal for them. Voila! So if you have the power to change the law, you know, that's what happens. So that's that's my point. I guess that's my point. And, you know, and, oh, I should say this. And we criminalize so many people in the world today that they have to build new jails. Now, you know, if you're going to do a maximum security prison or something like that, that means you have to really fortify that stuff. So the, the price that you say, for instance, for the price of a prison, you may be able to build, say, four schools for the price of that one's prison. Let me go on extreme. You may be able to build 10 schools for the price of that one prison. Now, if you build 10 schools and you train people to be teachers and stuff like that, then you could educate folks and give them jobs or whatever have you, and you wouldn't have the necessity to build a prison to, you know, not to, you see how that works? It's, I don't know. So anyway, so I don't call criminals criminals. I just call them job opportunists. That's, 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 that's as far as I'm going to go to the negative thing. They're, they're looking for job opportunities. They become job opportunists. They make their own way. Here's the big crime, though. Let me just say this. I'm just going to end it here. To give you an example, when I was growing up, they had the numbers runner. 
I think you have a sort of game doing the numbers too. Now what that means is that you know you put in a number, the number run and take your, your number, and then if the number comes out, they pay you a little something. Right? Mm -hmm. That's what I was growing up. Okay. Now a little bit of money you got was a little bit of money. It was enough to maybe pay, say for instance, I don't know, your rent for three months. You know? Now the state said, Oh, that's you're illegal, you can't do it, but they've always been illegal. But then they got hit when the written they said, Hey, let's start the lot the lottery. The lottery is nothing but the numbers run. It's mm -hmm. like the numbers. But now you might win millions of dollars. You get millions of dollars. You don't know what to do with millions of dollars. You never had that before. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so this is just one of those dispatches from the arts director and murder. So that would be me, T, from the Patterson Statement Change to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect.